Oh, it's uh, <laughs> Hi, my name's James. You're listening to Off the Stage. <laughs> <laughs> Your laugh is going to use this as a clip now. Everybody <laughs> listen to Off The Stage Podcast, you <laughs> Good evening, or good morning, whenever you're watching. Welcome to Off The Stage Podcast with me, James Berry, and Connor Michael. We are back here at the ship ISIS after a, a week away. At the uh, museum vaults, we went week. on big tour last week, didn't we? Did I? I was touring Three all. foot down the road, <laughs> desperately trying to find a, a seat because it was ram packed during the um, the Christmas. Yeah, Christmas week. Even this is out on the tenth of January. Yeah, well, you it's know. Weird. Do you reckon anybody actually listens to our podcast at five o'clock in the morning? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna work it out once. I'm gonna wake up <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning and see have how a many look views to see are if, on. See if any. So normally on two by like the Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually, on, I usually um, the reason I put it at five o'clock is because I know people get up in the morning and people want to watch it in the morning. I'm thinking, well, what's the earliest possible time someone will walk up, w- wake up to go to work? And I think five o'clock is about. Probably. Depends what your job is. That's true. Us musicians, <laughs> getting in at five. <laughs> that is very true. Anyway, shall we introduce our guest? Yes. On my right, if you're watching on the visual, we have Chris Gooch. Greetings. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, I, I listen to podcasts at six o'clock. Six o'clock? In, ah, you're, in you're the shower. On it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so that's, it works then. There you go. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> there we go. So uh, what are we drinking, Chris? What are you doing? I'm drinking uh, Erdinger Zero Alcohol. Okay. Because I kicked the drink two years ago. Oh, great. How do you find it? Um, generally behind the bar. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, uh, it's been quite easy the transition, you know, because yeah. in fact that stuff there saved me bacon because it's nice. If if there wasn't good zero alcohol beers, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't have been able to keep off it, you know. And uh, that's that's done it, you know. Yes. Yes. That, that that's that's my favourite non-alcohol one, the Erdinger. I think yeah. it's just, I'm gonna sound like a basic bitch, but mine's the Guinness Blue. I've never had Guinness. It Google tastes before. perfectly yeah, like it Guinness. Yeah, it's good. Did it on a road trip once. We were like, my mates were like, we'll have to borrow. Uh, and they were like, oh, let's have a few drinks for the road. I said, like, I'm driving. But I'll, have a, I'll see how these are. Mm-hmm. And uh, some lorry had like jack turned or whatever. So we're stuck in the traffic for seven hours just drinking Guinness <laughs> Blue. And they're obviously on normal drinks, but um, can't knock it. Like, no, it's when they first started doing zero alcohol, you could taste a difference. Yeah. But I think they're cracking the code now. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's, um, what, what are you drinking, Connor? So, uh, when we first started the podcast, I was obviously looking for the Guinnesses and stuff. I went into like Moretti's. I was mm-hmm. on water for a, a few weeks because I was doing a stag, di- a stag do. And then we, we migrated into Sours. And Julia downstairs uh, recommended whenever it comes on, there's a fantastic uh, bubblegum sour. And it's just never been here since. Until today. Yes. <laughs> and by the looks of your polyjuice It's potion, exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> We're both having Harry Potter drinks today. It's twice brewed. Can't be missing out. Twice brewed bubblegum sour. It tastes like it blows your head off. Like, oh, ooh, that's nice. It's a four point eight percent ABV. It's five. So it's it's a five. It's five. Oh, well, don't, the, don't the, kid yourself, the, James. The internet, the internet said four point eight. <laughs> yeah, so. well, the sign down says said five. Oh well, then I'll take this. I'll take the word twice for the brewed. Sign. This is the yeah. first time I've ever recognised or remembered the thingy's name. Oh. That's, there you have it. Yeah. Twice brewed, ship basis, limited offer. It's, it'll be gone by the time this comes out. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting another one in the break, to be fair, like, so. Um, so this episode, I don't have my laptop. I honestly didn't prep the episode. I kind of want to see how we just get along. Yeah, chit-chatting. So, um, have you ever listened to any of our episodes? We'll not be offended if you say no. Have you listened um, to a podcast? I can say yes, actually, because I listened to about five minutes of it today. Okay. Yeah. No. Which one was it? Say, say what I was letting myself in for. It was <laughs> yeah. a guy. I'm surprised you didn't cancel. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, I tried. I uh, couldn't get through. No, um, it was a guy who, does he play with Yuma? Oh, John. Yeah, uh, I think so. Eb. Eb. Eb, Eb is, is yeah. that. Oh, it's a little bit that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Okay. I like John. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we were in this room last time, actually. We were in this room last time. Yeah, it was last time recording this room. Um, Yeah, so normally what we do, uh, it's kind of like a few sections. We're going to chat about Mm -hmm. music, we'll chat about random stuff, we'll chat about your music, and then we're going to have a little sing-song from yourself. Um, Obviously, you've got a harmonica and a guitar. What kind of influences were were yours? How did you get into music? Oh, God. Um, When I was a kid, I've got an older brother... And he, I'm talking a long, long time ago, and he was into T-Rex and yeah, no, all the stuff that was on the telly at the time, and he had a Les Paul copy, so I had to get something, so I went and bought a second-hand 
SG or something for about 20 quid. Mm. And uh, it just went from there, just taught myself to play. Then we, we started getting into rock stuff, you know, Johnny Winter, Paul Kossoff, Free, Deep Purple, all that sort of thing, you know. And it just spiralled from then. So it was, it was all the rock stuff initially. And then I started getting into country rock and blues and, you know, went, went back to the blues like right back you know mm. um i mean when we were at school we used to um we used to literally go to the library and get books out on blues old blues and blues musicians oh. and um we used to like write the the words out of the songs and, and practice and play them you know yeah so blues country all that kind of thing really and it's now i'm kind of like i don't really listen to rock i don't listen to any mainstream music it's all kind of americana and yeah Mm. You know, people like Steve Earle, Justin Townsend, Lucinda Williams, Jackson Brown, all that sort of stuff. You Quite know? your neck of the woods, that, and it? it's called. I think. I think that um, the kids call it old country nowadays. Yes, yeah, they do. I so it's kind of like it's it's country, but it's like it's yeah. a it, it's slight evolution of it. Like, uh, uh, it's, it's just a name, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it doesn't mean out really. I mean, no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it's just Every, pe- people like to have the the box sections, the, the boxes yeah, ticked, yeah. but it's yeah, it's Indeed. just music in it. But yeah, that's my influences <laughs> at the minute, really. Yeah. Mm. How frequently do you write your own stuff? Um, when um, when it decides to come to us, really, um, I can't um, I can't just sit down and write. I've got to wait till it comes to me. I just pick the pen up, and it writes itself. You know, mm. um, apart from well, in fact, the last song I wrote was about a month ago, and this, it was a strange one because I decided I was going to write without the aid of a, a guitar. Right. So I normally sit down with one of my acoustics. And um, this night I went to bed and a couple of lyrics came in my head um, about two o'clock in the morning. And I woke up and it's wrote a good time down. for lyrics, that. Yes, it right is. Two o'clock. If you're not writing before 2 a.m. in the morning, you're... Well, that's it. <laughs> so I wrote them down on a pad next to my bed and I went back to sleep. And I got up in the morning and um, went and made myself a cup of coffee and come back to bed. And there was the song on the pad finished. Yeah. And I've got no recollection of writing it whatsoever. This is what, like sleep war. Yeah, sleep sleep world. Yeah, and that was the last one. Uh, generally speaking, the songs just come to us and, and they're written like, like that. I don't. Have you put music to that song since? Oh, yeah. I just done, sat there with lyrics now. As soon as I woke up, I yeah. go up straight away and do it. You know, I'm, like, cool. I'm really impulsive and uh, it's got to be done there yeah. and then. But yeah, normally with me, it's something will it'll influence me, you know, yeah. whether it's some bad news, normally women problems. Whatever it is, and then I'll just write, and it's done, you know, and that's it. Yeah, that's good. I, I'm, I'm, well, I, I write a few songs every now and then. But then, like, I play them for ages, and I've had these songs for ages. If anyone asks, how did you write that? I go, I, I don't know. It's just like, it's yeah. just always, it's in, after you wrote it, it, it feels like it's always been there. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how to kind no, of explain. No, I think I know what you mean. I mean, I know a mine that just, if, if I'm going, I mean, I'm just thinking of one instance when I was, um, I was, uh, after my last divorce, I lost my job and my divorce happened as well. It was a bad one. And I ended up homeless for 10 months. And I was, this girl put me up in a, in a house uh, out in the wilds, this big house. And um, and I just sat and wrote every day. And I didn't try. Yeah. I just got up and um, sat down to call the fire. And all these things came to us. And every day I wrote a song and... I got a shed load of them out of that time I was there, you know. How long good. ago was that? Um, I've been in my, new, in my house two years, so it'll be two years, yeah, um, because okay. I went through all that process. I wasn't on the streets, you know, um, I was in various so, cities and things. Yeah, and couch surfing. Staying in hotels of, every weekend, vibes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was in the hotels and all that kind of thing, and then eventually I got my money through off the split in the old house, um, and I bought a little cottage, and I've been in there about two years. Um, got myself sorted and give the drink up and yeah. just kept on going from there, you know. That's good. Positive mm. stories. Yeah, yeah, it was I good because I was, um, when it all happened, I was in the band and, um, like, when everything went bad, um, I quit the band because I needed time off. I'd been gigging all my life and I needed, whether it was six months off or a year off, I needed time off. Um, so I quit and then, um, but it didn't work out as usual because I got a call to do an acoustic gig up in Belford off yeah, a friend of mine. Happens, isn't it? So I went up and done that. Never done an acoustic gig on my own before because mm. I'm not a singer as such. And then a week later, I got to do another one and then another one. And it, and I'd done a row of these acoustic gigs and then we got locked down. 
And then I finally got my rest. I've been, as in, I think about it, I've been kind of recuperating, if you like, yes. for the last couple of years. And now I'm like, I'm back to full strength again, yeah. So, you know, so I'm sure it's like almost everyone we've talked to is like the, the, the impact lockdown has made on like um, rest, um, self-reflection. Mm-hmm. And like rebuilding, yeah, it's dead. It's dead in rest now. Yeah, like been great for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I mean, I mean, even like just being in my house, um, it was a novelty just to have a roof over my head again. And yeah, one of my songs is all about that situation, and um, and just chilling out and being at home for a couple of years. I've got like I've got guitars all over. I think about fifteen or twenty guitars all over the house. I've got so many hanging up in the living room. So. Any time I get pissed off or whatever happens, I can just pick one Find up. Find a guitar. And you know, start <laughs> writing, you know, it's great. You know? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Nobody tells you bollocks you for yeah. noise that, you know, it's good. Living the dreamer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have to get divorced now, James. <laughs> the thing is, the wife watches the podcast, so... Well, I'm saying nothing. I'm not getting <laughs> trouble, mate. Love you lots. Uh, uh, keep them right, mate. Keep them right. <laughs> yeah, um... Yeah, the, the lockdown thing, though, it, it seemed to be quite like a 50-50 thing. Like, there was no middle ground. You either came out lockdown, like, right, I'm ready to make the next step. Yeah. Or you kind of left lockdown and went, right, music's not for me. I don't know anybody who came out lockdown the exact same as they went in. No. There's a lot that went one or two ways, and there was no middle ground. No, it's hard to kind of go, right, keep it going. two years up, let's uh, yeah. get back to, to the way, yeah. way things were. Yeah. Some people are, are more in. Uh, self-promotion and, and doing all that and I'm the opposite of that you mm. know yeah. I hate it all I can't stand ego and I all this all I say uh, when we got you in for this we normally yeah. like put on Instagram like, like ask questions and stuff yeah went to your Instagram your Instagram looks more like a like a personal page it is it's been yeah. ages trying yeah. to find a photograph mm-hmm. of, of yourself yeah. um, so we just kind of tagged your page in it yeah same with Facebook um, how do you find promoting gigs with like just personal pages rather than actual business pages um, I've, I mean, I've got a business page on my Facebook, but I very rarely use it for the, the reason I've just said. But no, like I, um, it's it's difficult now because when I was in the band, I would do all the promotion, do the yeah. posters, do all that sort of stuff. But now I'm on my own. I'm kind of like because I haven't got this ego thing. I don't push myself at all. I can't be bothered. And okay. secondly, because I'm doing you know, between 75% and 100% of me on music, you can't just go out and do any old gig anywhere. Yeah, yeah that's it. So you've got to like, you've got to create gigs mm-hmm. and and bring the audience, you've got to find the listening gigs or do, you know, a support slot or yeah. be asked to do something, you know. Uh, so I'm not gigging as much, but I'm, uh, and I could join a band and do all that. But you're doing the gigs you want to do. Yeah, I can't be, way. you know, I haven't got it in my heart at the minute to just go and join a band and do any old stuff that everybody else is doing. I'm just not like that, you know. Um, and I just can't be asked to do it myself at the minute. So yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing my own. And I'm, I'm one of these believers that things are meant to happen. And if something happens, it happens. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I'll roll with it, you know. If you were to do, like, a ton of originals, let's say you were like, well, right, Chris, you're on a headline show. Yeah. Would you put together a band for an original show? Or would you be happy just to do you an acoustic? <sighs> I, pr- I probably would put a band together for that, yeah, because... Because James it, did that quite a bit. He did a lot of original yeah. acoustic, and then he went, yeah. we've got a band now, and it's... Yeah. It's uh, like, acoustic's good, but the band's, like, next level kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, and to be fair with me, Timon's not me, me biggest strong point, you know. <laughs> it was my band used to always tell us, and I was always loud as hell as well on stage, because I always played electric on stage. Um, but no, I mean, I, I love doing the acoustic thing, the stuff I write... If the timing's all over it, because it's generally meant mm. to be, you know, some of the, the songs I play. Um, but at the same time, it is nice to have that, like, um, safety cushion of the, the drummer and bass player behind you, where you can, yeah. you know, you Yeah, you've always, it's, it's like the four legs, and if one yeah. if one person mucks up, you can still kind of recover, Absolutely, but if you're on yeah. your own, it's like, well, to be fair, if you're the drummer and you mug up, then everything's gone to shit, but... It's Usually, it. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a, like a lead guitar player with um, my wedding band, and I I make mistakes all the time, but right. nobody notices because I just 
pretend it's jazz, you know, just yeah. like, yep, yeah, I'm meant to do that. <laughs> Next well, time that, anybody that, sees right? Red Wings and you think, oh, that was out, everyone look at James. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy selling that one now. Yeah. <laughs> Red I Wings, fantastic you, band. You but can James... get away with more doing lead, though, you know, you can, yeah. you can improvise and do all that, but when you're on your own and doing an acoustic set it's more and noticeable. you're playing, you, you kind of drop a note mm. for the whole gig, you know, and that's, for me, that was like, that was double hard for me because of my timing issues and everything else and concentration levels were never there and I had to sing which I wasn't a singer you know and then so what did you do in the band were you guitarist I was guitar player I've always played lead guitar since I was 15 I'd done my first gig at the Royalty in Sunderland yeah. upstairs and the next night I'd done a gig at the um, what was then known as the Sunderland Art Centre um, oh, but I've played electric guitar bands all my life and um and now doing the solo stuff was hard, but then the hardest thing was actually halfway through that, learning to do it sober mm. um, was the hardest thing for me, you know, because for all my life I've always had a, a right old drink when I've been playing, you know. Yeah. It's not a good it's, thing, but it's just the way it, it adds, was, you It's know? an added confidence thing, though, isn't it? Like, because yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, di- I'm different when I... I love a few few beers before I got on stage because I, I do act like a bit of a bit of a knob when I've had a few drinks. Like yeah, on, on stage, yeah. <laughs> it's it's totally. Like, I'm, I'm going on. I've seen tour next year or this year now. Once this comes out, and uh, I try not to drink on stage, especially when I've got the loop pedal because it's a very big right. timing thing. You've got to get everything to the millisecond. Right. Um, but when I stopped drinking as much on stage, I feel like I don't have the same kind of. Presence. Yeah, to I'm be trying fair, to force that out depending on what crowd I get. I have like a it's like a two drink limit whenever I go on stage. Yeah, because otherwise you just uh, you, you're much. a bit too. Um, I've seen many gigs where you and Scott have had like seven pints before you walk through the door. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's just a it's, a, it's a car crash. Like I mean, <laughs> we we think we're sound flipping mint, but then you look, listen back to the recordings and it's like. Rrr, 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 rrr. Yeah. <laughs> if you watch the videos, as me stood at the side of the stage when it catches. Yeah. <laughs> I was lucky because my band, most of the band, really didn't bother with it so much, but they were, and they were really. Mm. top musicians you know um, but I would have like two or three pints before I even went on yeah. and then it would start from there but I would get away with it because I'm just doing the odd licks here and there a few chords uh, harmonies bit of whatever you know but I would get away with it but like after that doing the acoustic thing we a couple of gin and tonics and that was it and then when I did kick the drink all together it was like it was really hard, you know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it now. So, you know. timings might not be in perfection currently, but did you find once you went to zero alcohol or no alcohol at all, that timings were slightly better for yourself? Yeah. And, and, and the other... easier to do. Yeah, and the other thing I found better as well was, um, and it was weird, I didn't realise until it happened, is that when I'd be in the band and I'd have a few beers, I'd like, I'd wait till I go up to the mic and think, right, what am I singing, you know? <laughs> and sometimes it would come to his last second, as it does, mm. you know. Sometimes I'd shout over to one of the guys, what's the first line? Yeah. You know? <laughs> now, when I'm playing a song, I'm like, I'm thinking of the line ahead before I get to it. Yeah, mm. that's um, interesting. You know, so I'm my mind shopper. Yeah. You know, I'm sort of thick, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I, did a, I did a gig yesterday, you know. fantastic gig in uh, Ledgate Crew Club. Fantastic. If you guys are watching, it was a brilliant gig. Um, and we got Ashley up this on stage to sing a few songs and she does that frequently because she's really good Yeah. but because she was on her own the lasses that booked us were just like oh, yeah have a free pint so she's on like seven Heineken at this point and we're doing shallow and she's looking at me like oh I was like <laughs> go on <laughs> singing the same lyrics over and over again I'm like what, what are you doing <laughs> uh, she got off stage she's like I just forgot all the words I went yeah it's because that's, that's Heineken will do that yeah, uh, threw up down the side of my car after that on the way home she what? Threw up on the, oh, on the side oh, of the car. Oh, no home. way. Outside, though. Well, outside, outside, that's well, all like, right. Driving back home, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you spray bottle and clean that off and... <laughs> I don't miss all that anymore, like. No, sure. I wouldn't blame you. No. Um, I think that's time for a break. I reckon so. That was a good little part one. And we'll see good. you in part two. See you in a bit. Uh, oh, yeah. I was going to press the three. C. No, Hi, I'm Ollie Mers, and you've been listening to Off The Stage Podcast. I love it. Go listen. It's fantastic. <laughs> I always miss. For anybody who heard her, that was James missing the button. Again. I always miss the button. It's honestly, it's this, um, it's this sour. It's just, no, you don't have that sour every week. No, I don't. I like that you looked at me and go, which button is it? It's a B. Go on, press, press. <laughs> it's b- nice. No, press the button, James. It's my soundboard <laughs> as well. I'm just like. <laughs> Do you reckon we can get another one of these? 
Yeah, don't see why. Well, how often do you use this bar, the podcast? How often do you use this for the podcast? Excluding the podcast. Oh, um, not really. I'm toying with taking the pod on tour. Ooh, right. Now, obviously, I presume you won't be there at every gig. Um, obviously, I'm doing five dates. It'd be cool to sit down and do like a podcast exclusive with the sports arts, get a cut like little right. clips. And I was like, I'd either get one, or if you weren't going to use it, oh, can I borrow that for yeah, a week? You can I'm going to Birmingham, down. we'll get some local Birmingham acts sort in and it wouldn't be the high quality stuff you've got but it would be like the kind of like bonus episode yeah I'll lend you a um, lend you a small light and I mean depends where you're gonna record it but I'll lend you a I've small light venues. I'd just be like oh, get an uh, early sound check right we'll sit down have a little five minute chat uh, each every support accent's on well I, I'll have that I'll lend you a small little light it's easy chargeable and you can just kind of like if it gets if it's quite dark you can yeah, the the light. And stuff. I mean, you'll be you'll be there for the one in April. <laughs> yes, I will be. But <laughs> do the full shebang for that one. <laughs> yeah, it was. How come? How come the Sunderland gig was the best recorded one? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I brung my producer. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back to part two. We're all here. We did not get a new drink in the. No, we didn't. In the break, we might for the for the for the third one. Um, part two is basically like the whole wacky scenario. Um, we don't have any, so. Oh. What's your favourite? Tables or chairs? <laughs> <laughs> Beg your pardon. I don't know. Um, I, I've, no, I've got a, I've got a one. Right? Go on, so yeah. I've been toying with this idea. So if if you're a, an avid listener or avid watcher of the Off the Stage podcast show, um, let me know if you'd like this as a future feature. And but if you're not a fan, you're on the wrong show. <laughs> basically, um, I scowl with it every now and then, um, and there's like a thing called R musicians, and every now and then they have. Like just some dilemma, they don't know how to handle it, and I thought it would be nice for us experienced-ish musicians to give a hand to these redditors who are stuck on what to do. We're gonna have a new section called "Just Ask James." Just ask James and Connor and the guest. It's not alliteration. No. <laughs> <laughs> so good old judge. <laughs> I found one here. This is from seven days ago from um, the user Glad forward slash possibility seven nine three seven. So if you're watching. He's not watching. Glad um, forward slash 737. <laughs> so the, the title is, so we've got to try and work out what. Okay. Add some advice, give some advice to this guy. So um, the title is Beyond Beginner. So I took up an instrument in 2020. I can play some tunes, some of which are fairly advanced. That's good. I <laughs> talked to my teacher and we have agreed that I'm going to enter a competition. Grades are not a thing with this instrument. I don't know what instrument it is. Next October. Next, so I'm... This October, next October. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Where was it posted? Uh, it was seven days ago. Uh, so it'll be next, October. next year. Yeah. 2023. No, but that'd be, that'd be this October. It'll be the next one. Next. Right? Yeah, okay. Right, so it, I'm assuming it's 2023. God, yes. I'm such a fucking thick bastard. Mate. <laughs> How do I allow myself to play mistakes in front of a church full of other musicians? Can we have any insight on that? Excuse me, how that? do you allow? How do I allow myself to play without mistakes in without, front of a I church? With mistakes, just no. do it. <laughs> yeah. How do I allow myself to play without mistakes in front of a church full of other musicians? Go on. I think you just need to chill out a bit and just play, you know? Because, like, That's what I think. first of all, like, music's not a competition. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And you don't, you don't use it as a competition. I think you mentioned about that, didn't you? Yeah, he says he's going to enter a competition. Well, if you won't be doing that, that's stupid. Yeah. In my opinion, anyway. <laughs> it's like me competing with you as a guitar player or somebody else, you know. You, you, you just do your own thing, haven't you? I you can know. play one guitar riff. Yeah. <laughs> and it's um, Brown Eye Girl, badly. <laughs> and that far ahead, next October, I mean, crikey. I know. I, 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 I'd, I'd rather like a brand new set written by then, so yeah. just chill out and just yeah. play, you know. That's what I would say. Just chill out, glad possibility. Yeah. Anyway. I would say you don't. You're going to make mistakes. Yeah, You're going to bottle it. It's going to go bad. <laughs> what's next? <laughs> bad. Bad Connor. Bad Connor. Then, now what's the worst that's going to happen? No, well, what I would... My advice, just ask James if you're going to ask nicely. Yeah. Now we're going to do angel and devil responses. We, we, we could do. <laughs> but my advice would just, yeah, just, um, just learn to make mistakes. And learn, well, to, learn be, to play the song you're going to play. Yeah, learn well. Learn learn to cope with doing the odd mistake here and there. It's not like, I mean, I've, I make mistakes every single gig. I don't know, like it's without fail. But you just kind of like you just learn to laugh it off. And yeah, that's it. So get some experience playing an open mic nights. Like you'll you'll muck stuff up, 
and then just keep practicing. And if you practice enough, you probably won't make the mistakes in the first place. You but will. get get over the fear of making the mistake, and then you'll be That's absolutely right. You will make mistakes. Yeah. I went to see Ed Sheeran live this year. Yeah. He made mistakes. Yeah. I was like, that wasn't the right lyric. That go. wasn't the right note. You'll yeah. make mistakes. Just yeah. get on with it. <laughs> so just be like Ed Sheeran and just make a few mistakes in front and of a few church. Million thousand. <laughs> full of other musicians. And the other musicians are always going to make mistakes. The difference is they don't let you know that they made the mistake. They just carry on. I so, do. You see my face go, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. He has the mistakes gone in a second, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's it. Done it's done. Move on. Yeah, it depends move on. how many mistakes you make. Exactly, yeah. But, you know, if you make a mistake, people go, was that, did he m- m- mess that mm-hmm. up or what? Yeah, you don't know, it's gone. You know. Yeah. Well, the top comment, um, I'll just give this by Camomile. Practice, practice, practice. In the meantime, if you can find a small audience to play in front of, that would help. So, I mean, our advice is pretty similar to that. Uh, he says he, he was going, I, I was going to try using some friends. So... He's gonna do a gig with a no, bunch yeah. of friends. Uh, and I'll be honest with this one: friends is the worst option. If you yeah. turn up to a gig with your pals, they're gonna go, "That was fantastic." Yeah, turn exactly. up to a gig where you've never met anyone, and they will tell you it was shite. But you will get better from there. Exactly. <laughs> Don't use friendly advice. Always use constructive criticism. Exactly. Best advice I can give. Yeah, not absolutely. Next one. Don't put your oh, phone away. This is oh, fun. Right, it's okay then. Right, we're doing another Just one. Just ask James. But honestly, Just ask James. Took us ages to find that one. <laughs> um, there was another one actually. Um, oh no, that's not identify something. That looked it's, more like it's, hentai, that James. <laughs> what are you doing on your phone? This is this is um, this is this is not my phone. This is oh, strictly oh, no, no. the r slash musicians page. So whatever's on there. Oh, she's nice. <laughs> oh, cartoon, wasn't she? <laughs> um, where do you get your stage wear? <laughs> well, actually, no. We'd, we'd, unless you, unless we dress in like. Dragon shit. I mean, that's, um, not gonna, that's not going to apply. Ice print designs. I recommend it. Sell shields. They print my hoodies for us. Mm. It is keychains, uh, key rings, which are available on all my original gigs and my Conor Michael tops. So yeah, ice print design. Yeah, very good. Um, <laughs> Sorry to plug an, an unpaid <laughs> sponsor in here. <laughs> I know. I was going to say they've got to be paying the money to get there. No, yeah, two thousand pounds. <laughs> um, Right, hang on a minute. Um, honestly, it's... For all you it, audio so much... listeners out there, this is what happens when I don't prep an episode. James just starts texting people. Oh, on, hang on, here's a Come good on, one. Come on, James. Here's a good one. That's a lengthy this, one. This is quite a lengthy one, mind. So, um, right, it does have a too long, doesn't read, but I'll read it all anyway. Do your lovers and friends... Lovers? Bloody hell. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Do your lovers and friends ignore your music? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so he's, he's coming to, I am currently trying to start getting into music out there a little later than expected mid 30s well that's me um, I am very serious about it it is extremely important to me and I went through a lot of difficulty in life to get to create it people have said that this is objectively really good music and unique and there is a lot of talent that needs to see the light of day is this me I wrote this no it's not <laughs> It is very, very positive. It's always very, very positive. I make music in a few genres. Don't perform it live, though. Anyway, since I am an introvert, I don't get out a lot. I currently don't know many people, so I want advice on my stuff. I ask other friends, including people I'm dating, who currently also make music too. At first, they are really excited about it. But then, after like a month, every time I ask to check out one of my songs I am writing so I can better edit it and make it the best possible quality, they never listen. Mm. Correct. Yes. I, <laughs> I I keep having to remind them when I feel like I'm bothering them just asking. This really hurts a lot and I don't understand why this is happening because everyone has said that they like the music and it's really good. Especially when potential lovers do this. Ooh, right. Jeez. I hear that word. Potentially, I'm, I'm assuming this guy's not, not like... Is English, English, English isn't his first language because he's got a few like spelling mistakes and stuff. You might just not be good at it, doesn't he? Yeah. First language, James. I'm, I'm even doing a project with someone I'm dating, from. and he does this all the time. He always never listens to it anymore. He says, I'll check it out, but he never does. I have to keep asking and have to go out of my way. I get busy, I get being busy. I get being busy, but dude, I always check out their music, even if it's bad and it's. It isn't, but still. Is English your first language? Yeah, yes. it is. Uh, <laughs> that's why I have the book of big words. <laughs> if I like the person, I will listen every time. Is this just me? Am I missing something? No, it's not just you. 
no, well, you are missing a lot of things, and the thing you're missing is you put the right assuming, way to do it. I'm assuming you're just messaging them on social media, go and listen to my song. You, you say you're an introvert, so yes. I'm assuming you're not engaging in yeah. a way to like expect mm. something back. You already, I know, because I do this. You kind of you you message just to, and you assume no one's going to listen. You message expecting people to say no, and um, no, that's that's where you're going wrong. I think you, you've got to just physically get them in. I mean, if, this, if you're bloody lovers, you're in the room with them, just like put it on, just say, listen to this, what do you think of it? You don't have to actually physically message them. I don't know if anyone else can chime in on there. Uh... I think he's mentally unstable. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, he's like, how the hell I tell her about it, you know what I mean? He's, like, on. he's thinking too much into it, isn't he? He is, huh? you know, <laughs> How many lovers has he got, like? <laughs> Um, it, like the other guy you, just needs to chill out. It is. <laughs> Reddit yeah. needs to chill out. To be Very <laughs> same answer to what we said before. Um, if you're giving people the same song, oh look, I've improved it. They're not going to give a shit about it. Yeah. Like harsh reality is. Yeah. Uh, if you keep giving people different songs every week, every month, they're going to start off at this again. Mm-hmm. Um, what you need to do is you need to pick up the courage and go to an open mic night. You need to test it with live audiences. You need somebody to say, that was really good. Or you need people to not reply at all and you mm-hmm. go, right, that wasn't good enough. That needs work and bring it back. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to stop bombarding people because people are then going to stop messaging you. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get a single reply off them. Um, your friends will do that because you're not popular music. Yeah. If they're blaring podcasts, uh, not uh, playlists, you're going to find that their playlist is about 99.9999% famous musicians. I don't know anybody who has an actual local musician in the podcast, in in the playlist that isn't a musician or related to a musician. That's it, yeah. They're in our playlists because we try to support each other. We we hear it enough to put them in there, but you could ask your next door neighbour, oh, who's in your playlist? Give us your top 10. I bet you they've never put a local artist in there. Yeah. So people aren't going to listen to music because it's not mainstream yet. Um, you just need to find audiences that you don't know and take their positive or negative advice to improve it or record it. Exactly. It's that. not a case of get rid of it. It's either improve your song or record it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, don't don't give up. Just don't pester people. Top, top two comments. I mean, the first one's a little long-winded, but I'll, I think the, the first um, first sentence says it all. I'm a musician. Nobody cares. Uh, yep. Second comment. Yep. Wait, nobody really cares. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a pattern. <laughs> yeah. Be happy you have lovers. <laughs> I'm going to quote that one. That's a bit... <laughs> Well, if he's keep improving the songs, you know, like he might have a song and he might think, right, harmony's not very good, and that I'll put another harmony mm-hmm. on, yeah. and I'll take the effect of that one, and I'll send it to lover number three. Yeah. And she's heard the first one, she, she's not going to know the difference. Uh-huh. She might, you know what I mean, but it's just, you know, why would you bother, like, mm. just just get it done. You're just, I, I'm pretty sure, like, especially if you've got, like, multiple lovers, they're not going to want to listen to your songs, they just want, yeah. like, a daft chag. If I, sure, like, if like, I had yeah. multiple if you're ugly though when they say I like the song yeah. then you're yeah. in for a good song yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there you strange go. that was yeah. a good little section yeah I think we should do that more often just ask James just ask well just ask us no it's better just, just ask, ask James, James. alright then I do like a uh, theme music I want a theme music just ask James my standard answer is just be like just chill out man. just chill out <laughs> yeah alright well I'll come good in the end you know you've got, you've got like four or five lovers you know just uh, yeah. 50 ways to leave them yeah bring one <laughs> take one along, along to the gigs is your like personal assistant roadie yeah. thing I used to do that it was good yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> used, to, used to piss the lads off in the band like, yeah. uh, used to call one of them Yoko Ono oh like, yeah you know, uh, she used to follow us around a bit you know when I was I loved it first going out with Ashley when we first started dating uh, or we might have just stopped dating but we became friends um, we used her Tinder to sell gig tickets <laughs> <laughs> I think we did a gig at the Clooney. I think yeah, I remember well. that. And, the and uh, we, she messaged some guy or, or something, and uh, we were like, "Oh yeah, well, you fancy a date? My mate's playing a band gig or something to buy her a ticket." So he bought his ticket, came along, Excellent. actually ignored him. He started chatting up Anna, who was sixteen at the time. Yeah, that was a bit weird. <laughs> Questionable. That was very weird. Um, but, but who cares? But you got you got you got tickets the money for sold. The tickets. <laughs> so for all you gig guys who are like, "Oh, I'm just not selling tickets," Tinder it. 
make sure you've got an attractive female friend. Um, yeah. Put her on Tinder, even if she's just, got a fella. Make sure a fella agrees to it first. Just, just well, I'll just find a sell tickets. Picture of a random good-looking girl and just catfish someone. It's into. not illegal to catfish. If you do it well enough, you'll be on a TV show. <laughs> and then what's the worst that happens? They knock on your door and go, "Why'd you catfish?" Oh, well, I'm promoting my music, and they've given you free music promotion on international television. Exactly. So, so. catfish is the way forwards. That answers every just ask, James. And we'll see you in part three. Yes. What's happening, guys? Uh, I'm headlining Little Buildings on the 28th of January. Uh, it's going to be £5 a ticket. James is currently checking the focus on the camera. <laughs> um, yeah, at the minute, as I'm recording this, I have 25 tickets left out of a 60-capacity room, so hurry up and get yours. Uh, we've got Josh Hennigan and the Praetors, our support act. £5 a ticket for three musicians. You may as well fork out the money and come and see us live. It is going to be a great show. Uh, after I sell a certain amount of tickets there, I'm going to announce the next one in March. So I will see you there. Cheers. Welcome back to part three. I successfully Scott says hit... that looks like the Incredible Hulk's piss. Yeah. It tastes like it too. I should know. How many times have you been uh, licking off the Incredible <laughs> Hulk's piss? Well... <laughs> Hulk smash. This is why James is uh, feeling a bit under the weather at the minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm dreading my gig tomorrow, you know. Where are you, where are you playing? Picked one up. Uh, I'm doing the Moose and Vert Christmas Village. Oh, yeah, I bet and that's going to be... Good, it's a good gig, yeah. but I am... Um, what village? Uh, it's like the Christmas Village of the Monument. It's just a tent. All right. Where that sells beer and mulled wine and it's stuff lovely. like that. It's fantastic, but I am not a gig capacity. I gigged yesterday and I was just, I couldn't hit notes. I was like, look, I'm off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I'll hammer big for New Year's Eve on, on Friday. And uh, and then someone said, do you want to do the gig on Wednesday? I was like, yeah, okay. Twist to my arm, you know. Oh, well. I'll probably be doing filthies with Stevie on Thursday. Oh. So, it's a tough life, James. Well, and I was going to say, you're not, you're flipping <laughs> non-stop, honestly. It's, you can wear yourself out. I'm very soft in January, though. It's starting to panic me. I've got, like, two gigs booked. I've, and then... I had, like, five or six, and they've all been cancelled. I think I've got more original gigs booked in than I have covered gigs yeah. in January, and it's not looking good. <laughs> right, all, all mine have been cancelled. It's just, like... But it's, that's January for you, isn't it? It's just, like... Uh, might be three feet of snow, so you might be over the moon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hate driving in the yeah. snow. It's, like... Terrific. I've got to go. I hope, hopefully, the snow will stay off for New Year's. Mm. Oh, hopefully, oh, this is gone. This is playing after New Year's, and it? it's playing in the New Year. I hope oh, the snow the has gone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the snow disappeared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome well, back to part three, guys. Yes. Uh, James was trying to say that, but I interrupted him about drinking the Hulk. Yeah, you what did, are you doing yeah. now? Mm-mm-mm. Mm, little Bruce Banner brew. There was also there's um there's have you ever seen Garth Marenghi's Dark Place? There's, a, there's an episode of that where um, all the water's green and they all turn into monkeys. All right. All right. But that's that's neither here nor there. Nope. Anyway. It's not. <laughs> it's an <laughs> incredibly like, um, niche niche reference, but you know what I mean if you've watched, ever watched Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. And if you haven't, you're in the same boat as us. Yes. So uh, any any gigs or songs coming soon? Yeah, I've got a, um, I've got a gig coming up in January. Well, um, we are. It's yet to be confirmed. It's okay. in Sunderland. Do you know um, is? No. Um, <laughs> there's somebody working on it as we speak. Because I've been asked, I'm getting asked all the time to do a, gig, a local gig. And um, as usual, I've never got around to it. Keep looking at different venues and thinking, that's too big, that's too small, that's too cold, the acoustics are crap in that one. <laughs> and so this guy who's um, kind of wants me to do a gig, he's kind of organising it. So I've okay. left it with him, you know. Cool. But uh, I just want that when, when I'm doing my own stuff, because I'm like talking about how the songs are written and everything else, I like it intimate, people around us rather than far away. Yeah. I like it warm and I like it to be like that, you know. So you've got to, you've got to choose your gigs carefully, you know. Unless you're doing a support at the Clooney or something, which is different, yeah. you know, that type of thing, you know. So yeah, a long answer to her. Short question. <laughs> right, that, that's what podcasts are for. Hey, we ask one question and talk about seven different things. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly it. <laughs> ignore the question. That's me going off on a tangent as usual. Uh, that's not a that's tangent. A, <laughs> I, the kind of gigs I kind of like want to want to put, like if I was doing like um, acoustic originals, the kind of gig I want to put on nowadays is like with like really nice plush chairs selling cocktails and not, not on these like dingy 
like little buildings and stuff. Although it's a great venue, <laughs> you want the dingy. I want like the, the, the dingy, up, upper class, it? upper class, sophisticated kind of people just sitting down. And, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, well, you know, just uh, uh, as as I'm aging, I'm getting my tastes are changing a little. That's bit. what happens once you get in your your thirties. You start mm-hmm. voting Tory. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never vote Tory to be fair. Like, but <clears throat> give it your forties. No, but um, <laughs> but I mean. No, yeah, I've always, I've always, because you know, I've got like the espresso martini song. I've always wanted to do a gig where you pay the money, like for the ticket, and each ticket sells, you get a free espresso martini. I don't know how that would work out in terms of finances, but like, I just think it's to be fair. Mm. You speak with the bar and be like, look, the tickets are technically going to be free entry. But yeah, everybody buys a ticket, they'll get a, they buy a drink, buy a ticket, kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, then you give. But the you're ticket. not getting paid from the ticket sales. <laughs> it's going on the drink sales. <laughs> Yeah, but it'd be worth it because people come down, wouldn't they? You'd have to open with that so that people didn't waste their espresso martini. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I'll do that, like, and I'd get some t-shirts, merch, and stuff. And what you need? Try well, and you sell need, that. You need to get espresso martini glasses with engravements. James Berry, the best. Yeah, that's pretty, rock band. yeah, that's pretty cool. Like when we did the uh, loves the you music just... video, I had the Conor Michael logo on the little tumblers. Yeah, and that worked quite well. I've still got one of yours, actually. I think I've still got one of mine. Yeah. You could do, like, what they're doing them. You know, I'm calling the adverts, you get a free Parker pen. Yeah. And you sort of subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, to, like, pay for your own coffin and that when you die. <laughs> no, yeah. You get, you get, your own you get a free pen. Pen on you. the thing with your name on it. Right? Oh, we'll do that now. For every every 100 subscribers we get on YouTube, message us when you're the 100th, yes. and we'll send you a free Ladbrokes pen. Yes. <laughs> a free um, Argos pen. Yeah. And every every five hundred you'll get a free IKEA pencil. Yes. <laughs> with, with with paper ruler. <laughs> every one thousand subscribers, I think we're gonna do a dip in the North Sea. Yeah we are, right? <laughs> right, that was our pledge. If we if we get this time next year on us by the end of twenty twenty three. By the end we of twenty on a thousand YouTube subscribers or more. Yeah, we're gonna do we're a gonna dip. We're gonna do a dip in the North Sea. Yeah. And hopefully not die. My friends do it every oh, day. <laughs> they do. Do they? My, my pals do it every day. Eh? Did it from a music video once. It wasn't that bad, but it was also in August. But oh, if we do it, it's going to be in December or January. Yeah. It'll be skinny dipping though, won't it? So. Mankini dipping. Mankini dipping, all right. Well, we'll see. If we, if we get some dignity. If we get 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> oh, yeah, Andy. Helicopter in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jumping in the air. Go ahead first. <laughs> yes, both of them. Um... <laughs> Any songs coming out? Any anything you think of recording? What are you doing? Well, funny enough, um, no, but that um, was funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, it's it's funny because all the stuff I've got, I've got enough of my own stuff to do two or three albums. But mm, nice. it's it's money like anything else, you know. So how many songs <laughs> would you put in an album? I don't know, really. I've got a like, number on it, you know. But, <laughs> like uh, you know, all I've been doing is just recording. Some people do some like stuff six stuff song on. albums. You go, shut on album. That's a yeah. long EP. I don't know, it's 12 the, be- the yeah, t- number it's they say. Ten, number. Ten People 12, normally get yeah. between 8 and 10. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. think you've ripped off there, but I'm going to go 12. I sometimes think albums are more valuable the less songs I've got on them. Yeah, because there's more like, quality over quantity, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, because so, it's easy to like stick three extra songs on, what do you call them, bonus tracks and that. Yeah. And I hate it like on, you know, um, on some of these music platforms where you put an album on that you want to listen to and then they put all these outtakes of the songs on afterwards and then yeah. some live versions and it just gets shitter and shitter the more you listen to it yeah they just the think the think the sell the think you're giving the, more they're giving you more more value yeah. that really you're not because yeah. really like the album should be the finished yeah. product Absolute. of what yeah, you've, what what you've, what you've yeah. so that was me totally evading the question there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no I've recorded all my songs or most of them not all of them but a lot of them on Band Lab I think it's called okay. it's oh, software yeah just for me on um, peace of mind so if I get shot or get hit by a bus or something you've tomorrow at least there, you know? uh, you've got something to <laughs> my kids can listen to when I'm dead and gone but uh, it gives us a bit of an idea of, of how I want them recorded when I do get in the studio you know yeah. so I've got the armies on and where to put the solos and where to do this and that and the other but it's it's just a case of getting in the studio and doing a few songs at a time that's, that's the way I'm probably going to do it but it's like anything with me, I've got like things to do in my car, things to do in my house, you know, and it's just prioritising, you know, and it's, mm. if I had a big, massive bag full of money, I'd just get the lock, lock done, you know, new yeah, yeah. windows, get my shower finally fixed, get my car done, get the, in the <laughs> studio, get all that done. Yeah, you know. it's the studio, is well, it? Well, you, you know, you, I just do as, like, when I can, you know, I just yeah. do a couple of songs here and there, or whatever, you know. That's cool. You know. 
I would, uh, that's, that's, that's time for me. That's Because uh, I say I've got the same. I'm like three albums worth, but it's just not the time to do it. So but you know, for me now, I've got an, a, something ready for this year. But I need to be able to afford to get in the studio. Yeah. yeah. Is that cheap, is it? <laughs> no. But, uh, uh, I'm desperate to get in and get songs packs. written, like uh, recorded. I really am, you know. But uh, as and when. You can, you can kind of get like cheaper studios nowadays because you get like um, uh, you get like a producer who does something like Easy Drums, which is um, it's like a program drum thing, but mm. sounds like the real deal. You might not get it as it might not That's sound right. as it might not sound as good as like a proper professional studio <laughs> thing, but it'll be like a tenth of the price. Mm. Yeah. And at least it's something like half decent that you can yeah. Yeah. call your own. I think I went to Richards to do my first album, yeah. which is now signed and given to Ollie Murs. So I hope you enjoyed that, Ollie. I'm sure you're watching the podcast <laughs> since you've uh, given us a little clip to put at the end. Mm. I think um, I'll just do my acoustic, you know. And it's it's really easier, is, it? Yeah, yeah I think so. But, uh, it's funny, the last studio I was in, I, uh, I think I recorded three or four songs and... Um, it was a disaster, the place was... I'm not going to mention what the studio was called, but it was like... I had to put my coat on halfway through, it was that cold. Oh. Um, the coffee was disgusting in these little plastic cups and that. And I was doing a vocal take on one of the songs and uh, somebody just come waltzing in, shut the door behind them. You know, oh, yeah. Wow. like that, you know, I was like, don't mind me, like... I know the, feel, the last studio I was in was, was an absolute shite hole. It's called like Berry Island or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably the same <laughs> one, you know? I would not recommend that. I'm joking. This is James's homemade studio. Although you've, um, you've recorded two songs, I've just like, I haven't had time. I, I'll get, I'm getting them done in yeah, January. Don't worry about it. There's no rush. Because like I said, to, <laughs> when I get the final, so the, what I've done, I've recorded demos with James and then I'm going to use them to go. I, I've been yeah. using Blast Studio to do my last couple of singles. Yeah. And, That's uh, the one to use, honestly, it Blast Studio. And it worked well because it placed third in the charts, so it, yeah. it's the right studio. Yeah. Abbey, yeah, yeah. Abbey Road of the North are called Blast Studios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so once I get the demos and the finances, I'm going to go in and I've got three songs to record, two that I've done with you, and one that was going to be in the second album that I did with Rich. Right. So I recorded like an entire second album to release after the first one's done. Um, and then instead of doing that, I kind of just released Home as a single, redid it. And now I've got a new one called Shooting Star, which I'm going to redo with Blast, but it's all been done with Rich, so I've kind of got that. Oh, so I actually need to figure out how the two I've done with you are going to, going to come along. Yeah. Well, I've, I've already got one song recorded with Blast. So. Ah, sweet. Uh, imagine, imagine how easy it would be if you just had money. Yeah. How easy things would Money and time. Just yeah. like... Be nice, uh, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's it. I won a fiver on the lottery yesterday. Oh. I won a five on the scratch card oh, oh, yesterday. Oh, James, I tell you yeah. what. Me and you this time Honestly, next year, son. Me, me, my brother, right? Because we, because my mum is a, well, we do, um, we do like Christmas dinner. We have a, she gives us a scratch card each and like obviously Christmas cracker. So the scratch card, my brother won £10 on the scratch card. So we went to the shop. Um, it was Christmas Day, he won the scratch card. We went to the shop yesterday, just cash in, it was £10 and bought two scratch cards. From those scratch cards, he won twenty pound. Oh wow! And then he spent on four scratch cards, twenty pound worth, and lost the lot. Oh no! <laughs> That's the way it works. Yeah, it is. I I, uh, I put a box day accumulator on yesterday, and I was a Brentford win away from three hundred and eighty quid. Ah, but that's, and they were that's, two 0 up in the first half. Oh really? I was gonna say that's <laughs> every that's, other one came through. <laughs> that's that's your original mistake, but went for to win. They were two 0 up, and I was like, uh, oh, I'm on this, and then no, Spurs came back and scored, and then somebody rubbed salt in the wound when I put a post about it and went, oh, if you'd bet with bet three six five, you oh, automatically right. win when the two 0 up straight away. Oh, I want the Sky bet, so fuck you, Sky bet. Ah, that's <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Ah, that, that could have paid for your studio possible. time, that. I would have been at least a good Well, at least you've got so. a ten of between you, haven't you? That's a start. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just keep that put in a little pot. Yeah, it's, well, it's funded in the podcast, that. Keep yeah. every every Christmas, yeah. scratch card. Yeah. By the time we're 97. Yeah. Look, James, when we're buying pints for the value of £6.15 per pint, yeah. Yeah. five or every year is not going to cut Yeah, I yeah, know, that's true, actually. <laughs> Yeah, that last, drink, last drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No more till 2024. Swear to God, that would actually save us a bloody fortune, to be well, honest. That That's a good shout. We'll just put drink money aside and just spend it on, a, yeah. on music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would work. Well, that was great. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> a great reflection. Um, what song are you going to play us out with? What, what's the title? Well, I'm gonna, I'll tell you about this song when I do for you. Um, I wrote it last Christmas, dear. Uh, not, hang on a minute, we're in January now, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, sorry, that, that's not true. Two Christmases ago. Yeah. yeah. Which, 
even today is still two Christmases ago. Yeah, <laughs> kind yeah. of. I saw the last one anyway. Um, so I went out fishing on the morning, as I always do on Christmas Day. Came home, had a shower, had a pizza, and wrote the song. And it's called Every Day is Christmas Now. Cool. But it's not a Christmas song. That's fine. So uh-huh. it's all about, it's all about like not giving a toss about the past and all the yeah. shit that like I've gone through and not worrying about what's coming and just enjoying the day. And it's also kind of touches on kind of the divorce situation and giving up the drink. It's all like chucked into one song, you know. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Well, let's get that played. Yeah, um, okay. Thank you very much for coming down. You're welcome. Uh, what was your social media tags if anybody wanted to find you? Um, I'd rather they didn't, to be honest. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. um, it's just uh, Instagram's Chris Gooch stuff. There's a couple of little... Um, little it's Chris underscore Gooch underscore, underscore stuff. Underscore, that's it, It'll um, be on the YouTube thingy we'll, anyway. We'll advertise so it. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't like Facebook. I hate <coughs> Facebook because it's full of people with big egos. and oh, same. So is social media. Arse lickers. And yeah. uh, I don't like it. But, um, yeah, I like Instagram. It's good. Yeah. Well, we've been Off The Stage UK uh, on all social platforms, bar Twitter, Off The Stage 2. Um, if you've got any queries, questions, uh, artist requests you want to see on the pod, if you want to ask James a question, if you want to tell us your best or funniest or worst gig stories, email us at offthestageuk at gmail.com. Um, we're on every Tuesday. Drop us a review. Tell everybody we're mint, even if we're not. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a great rest of January. <laughs> See you on the 28th, where I'm doing Little Buildings, and the 25th, where I'm doing uh, any music volume now. That's been confirmed. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure the adverts have been in here at some point. Um, yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us, guys. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate and we'll, uh, we'll look forward to you soon. <laughs> Thanks for coming down. <laughs> Hi. It's fun. I love you. And we'll uh, see you on the flip side. All right. Don't you forget uh, the words? Uh, you don't drink coffee. I do drink coffee. I'm oh, sorry, but you don't drink cocoa. I drink coffee in the morning. I drink tea.
Yeah, thank you very much and good night. <laughs> Fuck the lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God, I've left it. Was that